There is so much, so yeah. much out there. Like yeah. I remember the moment I became Meryl Streep fan, which everyone is. I saw the film and that one look when she's on the pier and she turns around. I was like, oh my god, who is this goddess? It was <laughs> like that. Hi guys, my name is Vaibhav and welcome to Chal Chitra Talks. This is our episode with Shefali Shah, ma'am. So Shefali Shah is currently one of my favorite actors in India right now. उनसे हमें बात करने का मौका मिला during the promotions of Delhi Crime season two and बहुत ही limited time था हमारे पास but I still try to talk about the show and also take a lot of recommendations from her. I got to know during the episode that she is also a big fan of Before Trilogy. So बहुत ज़्यादा relate किया मैं कुछ recommendations भी उनके साथ आना recommendations Are amazing. So Delhi Crime का नया सीजन इज आउट ऑन नेटफ्लिक्स राइट नाउ जाके देखिए एंड लेट्स जंप राइट इन साइड दी एपिसोड वी रिकॉर्डेड विद शेफाली मैम ऑन चलचित्र टॉक्स हाय शेफाली मैम वेलकम टू चलचित्र टॉक्स हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड आई एम गुड हाउ यू डूइंग I am doing great, and ma'am, I finished Delhi Crime season two very, very recently. In fact, today and like I loved it. I enjoyed it more than season one. Is that something you are hearing a lot? I am hearing that. Yes, and I'm so happy and glad that both the seasons have been loved and appreciated unanimously by critics as well as the audience. So it's it's great. Ma'am, one of the things I liked about the season was I loved the heads and tails of the dialogues, like the throwaway things you would say that otherwise would have been cut on the edit table. Like there is this scene where, uh, like uh, Rasika's characters goes to a medicine shop and asks, hey, "Do you know this like person?" And the like, "Wo kare, arey ab dekh to lo sir, ab bina dekhi kare ho." Are these improv dialogues or are there any dialogues like this where it's a throwaway line but yet very impactful for the universe? Which is there? Uh, no, I think these are improv lines because the actors know these characters so well because the actors know this world so well. I think they gel and it's just become like setting home for them, and that's where it comes from. Also, with directors who understand that it's a collaborative process, you know, where they let you go. I mean, they've given you a blueprint and then say, "Okay, fine, take it from them." So I think it comes a lot from that. Got it. And ma'am, your character has to face immense like stress. What do you think like your character would do to unwind? I think on a certain level, Bhavika and me are similar. I don't think we completely detach from what we do. Yeah. I don't think we distance ourselves from what we do. I think she would go back home and discuss what was her day like with her. Husband, because he's from the forces, he understands it, and um, but I think what we come to see, <laughs> yeah. And what about you? Like, do you have any rituals as such, like a daily routine or a morning ritual that you follow? Let's say not touching the phone for a certain period of time or things like that, which helps you be sane. Well, I wish I did, but I do not have any such rituals. Okay okay I I also love like when you do acting without saying dialogues my favorite scene apart from Delhi crime is also from your short film juice like where all the acting was done through the eyes and uh, the dil dhadakne do scene the chocolate scene like there are so many scenes like this like which like make your acting very special for me like is there any scene where you are not saying a lot of dialogues in Delhi crime but you think like Okay, this is one of my favorite scenes of mine from the show. I think the last drive home. Ah. Uh. Because uh, there is a lot of rejection. There, is, it's not a win for Batu. It's yeah. not, and you can wake up. You know, her first drive to the crime scene. There is so her her shoulders are broader, but when she's driving home, she's slumped, and she's it's it's a lost battle she's fighting. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's a beautiful moment. In general, are you into the genre of crime, crime docu series? Because a lot of shows these days are about crime. But do you like to watch them as a viewer? Yes, absolutely. Love. Can you recommend love, us? Love. <laughs> can you give us some of your recommendations in the field of like in the genre of crime? When they see us, uh, two detectives, line of duty. Uh, Broadchurch, Unibomber. Uh, wow, there's so many. 
And these, these particular ones like the crash, uh, bad vegan, uh, dropout, these are, these are, you know, these are people who committed crimes and yeah, got yeah. Which one did you like more, uh, we crashed or dropout? Crash, we crash. Any particular reason? I think the show was tight. Hmm. The way it was written and, you know, all of it. Right. Uh, yeah. Got and it. Of course, got it. All three of them in the crash and in dropout. What performances? Both. And, and and in True Detective, have you seen both seasons of True? Like, I think there are three seasons now. Have you seen all seasons of? And which is Fargo. your favorite one? Fargo. Oh, yes, Fargo. Fargo. I mean, how every season was like, what is going on? Uh, yeah. I think True Detective, I felt like very long ago, True Detective, but I think it was the first and the last season. Yes, yes, yes. Second season, people did not like that. My, my favorite is the first one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Have you seen Mindhunter? Yes. Yeah. Is that something that you would recommend? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Ma'am, what's your relationship with books? Like how much are you into books and uh, uh, tell us a little about it. So I was heavily into reading. I love reading. Um, even if I'm sleep deprived on a flight, I will read. Uh, Every time I go to the airport, one of the things I have to pick up at airports, wherever I am, is books. Uh, but I've figured that there are a lot of books lying in my library which I haven't read. They're calling out to me. And also, if I had the option of reading over watching something, I think now I'm more inclined to watching something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like uh, I also noticed that on Instagram you follow Maria Popova, who is the founder of Brain Pickings. Like, do you like go to those blogs because I think she's running one of the most beautiful blogs on planet Earth, where like every artist is covered. Like, is that a website that you refer to or her page in general? Uh, sometimes yes, not yeah. on a regular basis. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And uh, what what is and uh, I also want to talk like about like I want some book recommendations from you, like be it the ones you have read recently or the ones that you have read in past. Like if you have to talk about the books that have shaped your life in the most influential way, which ones would they be? Uh, you know, when I read it first, I did not. I did not find it as an exciting read, but as I've grown older, I think that book makes a lot of sense. Uh, which is Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Oh, yes. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, also, The Bridge Across Forever. I love that book. And I actually yeah. sometimes want to fantasize about an alternate reality. Um, yeah. Many masters, many lives. Yeah, yeah. I believe that once you go away, there is still something else that happens in an alternate universe. Also, it, it might seem completely uh, different, but like after Thornbirds uh, or after Rebecca and these kind of books, when you read uh, like Roald Dahl books, yeah. and, uh, every time you read a story and you think I can, uh, let me think of what the end can be. And it's yeah. even more unpredictable, which is great. And uh, also uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Loved it, loved, it. loved the character. Did you also enjoy the movie as much, The Girl with the Dragon? Not, not yeah, as much. I haven't seen the Swedish one. Got it, got it. When we were doing this episode with Ratna Patik, ma'am, we asked her the same question. Let's say if you are reading a book which is not in Indian language, let's say if you are reading a Japanese book and let's say a Murakami book, so. When you're reading about the characters, two Japanese characters who are there in a Murakami book, are you imagining Japanese faces as you are reading those? Or are these the faces from your own reality? Or are you imagining yourself? No, I'm not imagining myself. I'm not imagining my own reality. I am actually imagining uh, the characters of that book. I mean, the most beautiful part of a book is you can go into a world that's not there yeah. and disappear into it. Yeah. And it's amazing. So no, yeah. I do not see myself and I do not see uh, characters from my real life. Got it. 
got it i also want to ask you this is something i ask all my guests let's say what would be that one recommendation you have a thing that you purchased for less than 10000 rupees in recent times that you would request every person to invest in i think there is a skin care product uh, called clinic moisture surge okay i love it and i'm somebody who never uses moisturizer for the longest time but uh, i think it's a great moisturizer nice and let's quickly also talk about movies ma'am uh, uh which are your some of your favorite movies if you have to recommend us a few so i'm a hardcore romantic and ah. i like uh but um guide guide uh, before sunrise oh after midnight ma'am i have the uh, posters of all three in my room <laughs> I love it. I love the before sunrise and I love the before midnight. I love those. Um, yeah. And I love this film called Anomalisa. Anomalisa. Uh, oh, uh, Charlie Kaufman. But what a film! What a film! And then, of course, I mean, you've seen Parasite, you've seen Marriage Story, you've seen, uh, and of course, there are the classics which you can't. Uh, you know where you're talking about what about the scarfings and uh, taxi driver and just uh, Meryl Streep films and yeah. so much, so much. I just want to take a moment to talk about before trilogy. What is it that like stands out for you for that trilogy? Why why do you like it so much? Because it's unrequited. Hmm. It's unrequited for the longest time. Yeah. And something you don't know. something you don't know where it's going to go is always more exciting it leaves hope for that just a little more beautiful this is amazing what's your relationship with music i love music i would as got it but i love this music on a drive also i have this very you know i can put my bluetooth on and play my list but i just have this itch to keep changing the channels to see what song will surprise me and i can love the song And then yeah. I complain also to so God. They only put advertisements, and I can't do so. But yeah. uh, I mean, I love music. Nice. And uh, tell us about your favorite artists. Like, uh, which are the artists you keep going back to? Oh my God, Hari Bharman. Yeah. Uh, Asha Bhosle, Lata Mangeshkar, Kishore Kumar, Nilini Koyanawi. I love his instrumental. I love his album called Seven Days of Walking. I okay. really, really like it. I listen to a lot of instrumental. Uh, relaxing instrumental, um, you know, calm nature sounds and all that. Uh, yeah, I enjoy. I really like it. It's just I think it makes me feel very like I'm somewhere in the woods. Kind of thing. My son surprisingly has made an album of like old classics. <coughs> I love Love Me I Rose. Yeah. Uh, the original version of it. Yeah. I love music. so uh, the other question i had was about actors and we were discussing how i particularly love your acting is because of what you do with your eyes so are there any actors that you really like who can do who can say a lot without like speaking but just with what they do meryl streep meryl streep oh olivia colman anthony hmm. hopkins in the father of oh, yeah the pope both of them yeah Oh my God! What are these films? Anomalies. They're not even yeah. facing. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. Not, I mean, there is so much, so yeah. much out there. Like yeah. I remember the moment I became a Meryl Streep fan, which everyone is. Uh, you know, I read this book called. Uh, one of my friends had recommended this film called The French Regiment's Moon, and I found the book. In one of those Rati Bala shops, very, very many, many, many years ago, and I had read the book, and I said, "How can you translate this book to screen? How is it possible to show all of this? Because in a book there is a narrative; it doesn't have to be a dialogue, and it was a narrative. It wasn't a dialogue. And I saw the film, and that one look when she's on the pier and she turns around, I was like, "Oh my God, who is this goddess?" Like <laughs> Lovely, ma'am. Which is uh, your favorite Olivia Colman performance? And have you seen the Lost Daughter? Absolutely, I've 
I've seen the lost daughter, I've seen the father, I've seen broad church, I've seen her in three bag. Uh, oh yes. So, I've seen her obviously in the crown. Uh, and it's so, so strange that the first time I saw Olivia Colvin was in broad church. And I was uh. blown. And like I've become her biggest fan. I mean, I'm blown by how amazing she is. Which are some of your favorite plays? I haven't seen a play in a very, very long time. Oh, yeah. I know which one. Lion King. Yeah. I love Lion King. Whenever I travel abroad, it's a game. Like my kids are pakao, my husband is pakao. He should find the time and go and watch Lion King. My God. And even till date, it is the most exhilarating experience uh, I have ever had. And I continue to have. I mean, I'm like a child when I go to see it. Uh, another play I really enjoyed, which I saw with my son recently, was uh, uh, I think it's the play that went wrong or the play that goes wrong. Ah. I saw it. It's hilarious. It's really funny. And I saw it for the second time around. But Lion King is just my all time favorite, favorite, favorite. Yeah. When I was like uh, recently traveling abroad, like I had to choose between either the Life of Pi play or Harry Potter or the Cursed Child. And uh, I couldn't. Life of Pi. Sorry? Please tell me you saw Life of Pi. I saw Harry Potter and the. <laughs> you don't like Harry Potter? <laughs> so we went for. You know, there was the, the, the Harry Potter was split when we went to see it. I don't remember which one was it, but it was split in three parts. So it was two hours, two hours, two hours. Hmm. Where it was six hours with one, one hour, 45 minutes of gap in between. And we were so excited, spent so much money on those tickets. Like the third row, I and we wanted a big group. After the first one, nobody's saying anything. And I said, listen, I don't think I can handle this anymore. Slowly, slowly, everyone started. My sons were like, if my sons couldn't handle it, then I was like, I can't get it. I'm leaving. People also like, I don't think I can, I, I think we can leave. After the first part, we all left. <laughs> but I think I really wanted to see Lion King, which I couldn't miss. And uh, Lion King ki ticket me. Uh, are you a foodie? Complete foodie. I love food. Which are some of the best places in Mumbai that you can recommend to us for like like cafes, restaurants that that you like uh, to go Kazani. to? Yeah. Kazani. I think it has the best food. Uh, Ghazali, Krishna, I'm very uh, inclined towards coastal cuisine. Soul fry, which is Goni's food. Very, very small places, but fantastic food. Then there was a small place in Parla called uh, Purepur Kolapur, which was authentic Kolapuri food. Then there was a place called Tosha, which had lovely Gujarati food. So, uh, all of this. And then there was... Uh, I think El Mexicano or something at the president, which is not there anymore, which had great Mexican food and fabulous marmite does. Are you an on wedge person? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm a non vegetarian, but uh, in my house, we are vegetarians. So I eat when I go to Mongols or I go out to my friends. Yeah, because uh, our last episode was with Mr. Anurag Kashyap. So he said, like, whenever he has a shoot in South Bombay, there is a point that everyone goes to Baghdadis. So Baghdadis is the ah. place like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And which are some of your favorite dishes? Like I said, I love coastal music. Hmm. Like, really like uh, South Indian, Goanese, uh, South Indian, I don't mean just dosa and whatever. Like I mean a Mandalorian Kori Roti or, uh, you know, uh, like the Kerala fish curry or stuff like that. I love it. Totally loved. Amazing. But I'm a food. I love Italian food. I, I mean, I like continental food. I love Mexican food. Uh, I like sushi and all that. I go to eat them every day. Like there are certain people who eat sushi every day. I don't eat every day. I can't eat Chinese every day. It's once in a month or once in two months that I can eat with Chinese. Uh, my go to food is chawal. Ha. <laughs> Achar chawal, ghee chawal, namak, it's chawal. 
got it this is great thank you so much shefali ma'am for giving us your time and for giving these amazing recommendations <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so much and uh, like uh, uh, i would request every person out there and i can vouch for it we run a recommendation based channel and my latest recommendation is delhi crime season 2 which is better than delhi crime season 1 but both are equally good so go and watch delhi crime season 2 and thank you so much shefali ma'am for your time thank you so much thank you